All right. We are live. We're live. Morgan Molitor. <laughs> How are you? I was going to say it. First time I've been invited. I've been waiting for this invite for a long time. <laughs> well, you, you weren't ready. You weren't set up. <laughs> True. Amen, Tyler. Now, Amen. Now you got the mic. Now you're good. Mm -hmm. I'm still uh, not sure if I'm set up, but well, we're going it's, with it. To be, I, I'm. I was gonna say to be fair, but that would just be me defending myself. But the the reality is, I don't even know who's been on the podcast anymore. And I know that's terrible to say, but it's you know, I thought Doug had been on, and I asked Tyler, Tyler I was like, "What? No, he's never been on." And I said that mm -hmm. Doug, and he's like, "Nope." I'm like, "I can't, I can't keep up." So I'm glad that you're here. I know. I appreciate that too. I listened to Doug's today, Clark and Aldean's. Mm -hmm few others have always listened to all your podcasts, but yeah, oh, you're I was amazing. thinking the same thing. <laughs> you're I, 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 I'm not really good at multitasking. I'm trying to like post that YouTube oh. is live is on and I'm, oh. I'm struggling, but I'm listening. I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, I was off air. I was telling Tyler about your trampoline room. Can you, can you, can you just explain what it is? Cause he, he didn't know about it. That's funny because normally in the podcast, I thought Tyler knew a little bit deeper about all of the guests. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't dig. I didn't dig into the trampoline room. You must be hiding this information. I guess so. We added on a sport court last year, and yeah, we shared everything online. How much it costs? Uh, we spent about one hundred fifty thousand dollars to add mm -hmm. it on. We live in a suburb of Minneapolis, Elk River, and. A lot of times, even clients right now will say, why would you do that over the value of what you'll get back later? And all mm -hmm. I can say is it's been worth every single penny. And our family lives in there all winter long, all summer mm -hmm. long. Uh, yeah, it's been a lifetime of memories already. And it's been two years since we dug the frame out of the ground and we put an indoor trampoline indoor golf simulator we did an outdoor in-ground pool um our hangout area and even with the holidays around the corners and maybe this will air afterwards but it's insane how much i just always go back to what you put into your house and what you want to do for your lifestyle yeah and yeah how big did you say this was Okay, I I should have Jamie on to say that. I mean, approximately, like <laughs> square footage. The square foot. I I can't even say it because I know I'll say it wrong. I mean, is it like the same size? Like, is it ha half of what your house is? Is it quarter of what our house is? But I'd say two. We got our house for, and we live in a suburb. Yeah. Um, two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. And we have five acres of land. Um, but it just goes back to, you know, what we're investing, what we're doing. Right. Um, that's how we talk to every client. I don't know if that was the answer you're looking for, but no, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out like what it would take to get this amount of stuff into an addition. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I, I want to say it's probably like, it, it's bigger than a garage for sure. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking like it's probably it's like 30 I by 40. 1200 yes. square feet yep i was gonna say that yes okay yeah yes it's pretty it's pretty big it's pretty it is and it's when i see and jamie even said we should have gone bigger and i'm like oh my god because once you frame it out that's where the money comes in yeah yeah you could have gotten more for, like you could have spread those dollars out wider he's like we should just set another 10 feet but it seems like you could fit so much more stuff in there I mean, at least from the stories, like when you're spinning around, yes. it's like, I see kids. the trampoline. Yep. I, I didn't realize mm -hmm. it was a golf simulator, but I'm like, I feel like, I mean, unless they're riding go-karts around there or something. They, like, they are. <laughs> do they? Yeah, amazing. That's awesome. And then we wanted a, yeah, rock climbing wall, and here we are. Oh, that's cool. So how, many kid, how many kids do you guys have? So we have three kids. Boys? Eight. Yeah, two boys, one girl. How old's Eight, the girl? five, and two. When is she two? She just turned two in, in October. This, in October, okay. So she's mm -hmm. a little older than Indy. I, I know. I, I, I was looking at your uh, the pictures 
from the fall that you posted with kids. And I showed my wife the other day. I'm like, look at this little munchkin. <laughs> like, reminds me of Indy. Like, Indy's just like this like spunky little blonde girl with this uh-huh. mu- that mu- with a mullet that kind of turns into a ponytail. Mm-hmm. So. And I always wanted four kids, so I'm slightly jealous, Nick. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm. I don't know. I I can encourage you to have another child. <laughs> you're gonna, I you're can't. Gonna have, you're My gonna... tubes are tied. It's done. We're over. Jamie think... was like done at two, and then I was like, no, we're going for a third. I think and that's then reversible. Tubes were tied, and no, I think that the, the procedure for the woman is pretty intense. Is it? I thought it was yeah. reversible. Yeah. So I love Tyler. <laughs> he knows. Did you, way did you more get it right me. after you had the baby? Uh huh. Yeah, that's when. That's when you should do it. We missed that opportunity. Oh yeah, you know? I do remember the doctor asking, like in the when. Yeah, when we yeah, were. I mean, there. they're already they're already in there. Yeah, they're like, hey, you want this tied up or <laughs> are we coming yep. back? And Jamie yeah. was like, yes, tie it up, and I was like, uh, okay. I, I also remember them. I guess be- we'll tie it up. <laughs> The next day, they were like, "Do we need to talk about birth control?" I'm like, "Man, they're just like, <laughs> like they're like looking at us like they can't handle kids or something. Like, what what's going on here?" I know. I don't know. But it's wild. Childbirth is so intense that like the last thing I need to talk about is birth control. Like right <laughs> after seeing witnessing a, a child be born, like the last. Jimmy closed his about. eyes. So <laughs> way to go, Tyler. Because. It's very intense. And I like <laughs> the last thing on my mind after witnessing my wife turn into like an absolute beast monster that's head looked like it was going to pop off uh, was let's have another one. It was like, no, I need to sit down. Dude. Nobody's like everyone's here. Everyone's alive. There's a lot of blood right now, but we're OK. Dude, Marley and Re- I mean, Marley was the first right so like it was just very you know oh my god we have a kid blah 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 but when we had reed it was within two minutes of like being introduced to reed that she looked at me and said let's have another kid (laughs) and i was like what like just like immediate and then and then indy was very different she was like immediately i'd never want to have i don't want to ever go through this again a day later, a week later, a month later, a year later, and then <laughs> here you are. Here we are. Um, <laughs> I also yeah. love your baby's names, both of you. I just want to say too, like Jamie and I have followed you guys for a long time, although we're friends right now to this day, but just respected everything, and that's kind of why we became in the same circle and friends and all that oh, good stuff too. Yeah, for sure. Well, names are t- names are hard. I know we yeah. boy uh, and boys specifically, but um, yeah, I mean, we, I, there's one that I'm like, this is the first time that I've actually been like, I think I know the name. Like I'm, I'm, I'm committing to Are this. you telling anyone? No. I was going to say, I can't wait to hear. No. <laughs> Nicholas, um, Nicholas. No, no. way. <laughs> Nick Jr. <laughs> no. <laughs> no you know, that would be good. <laughs> Reed. Nick at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <No matter. laughs> Reed is Reed Nicholas. So, and I was, oh, I love that. I, I'm uh, Nicholas Ryan. And then my next brother in line was Ryan Michael. And I always thought growing up, I was I always thought it was weird that I'm like, that was my middle name. And then you just took it for your first name. So you want to hear weird Ooh, <laughs> every so I'm one of five. There's four boys, one girl. Every boy has the middle name Ridgeway, and my sister's name is Ridgeway. Oh, I my, like that. That's not my, weird. It's my mom's maiden oh, name. I mean, that's I a like lot. That. That's a lot. Every boy has the middle name, Ridgeway. and then my sister also has that name. That's that's a lot. Where is not a lot? I like where that does your a lot. sister fall on the line? She's the second oldest. So I have an older brother, then my sister, then me, and then the two youngest are identical twins. What do you call her? Like, what's her nick? Like, does she Ridge. go by Ridge? Yeah, Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Primarily Ridge or Ridgeway. It's funny. We were talking the other day about names and like how someone was like, I like names that don't have nicknames. Yeah. And I was like, like Nicholas versus Nick. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, Marley doesn't really have a nickname, but I don't call her Marley. I call yeah. her Mars. Like, hey, Mars. 
But you also wouldn't name her Mars. Like I don't get when people name their kid and then only call him by a nickname, but the nickname is also a name. It's like, just name him that. Right. Which there's a a bunch of Jacks in our kid's school. And uh, I think Megan and I were talking about it. She was like, is their name John? John is, or is it yeah. or is it Jack? And it, they're all Jack. It's not. It's I mean, not that a, makes sense. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like our project manager. His name's Topa. Christopher. Yeah. But since the day he was born, Topher. Yeah. Yeah. Just name him Topher. But I, I love. No, no one knows him besides Topher. Right. That's what I mean. Just name him. Just name him Topher. Yeah, just name him Topher. His name doesn't need to be Christopher, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the names that we were considering was a longer name, and he would go by his nickname. And I don't like that. I'm just like, no, let's just call him his nickname. Like, let's just make it that name. Mm -hmm. The hardest part about naming kids, I found, was that you always knew somebody with that name, and it could easily ruin that name for you. Where it's like. Oh, I had this kid that came into my school for two months who like just nonstop picked his nose and that was his name. So we can't name him that. Dude, that's that. That's the only reason you end up not choosing names like names that you like. (laughs) And then once you associate him with someone that like there, there, we we talked about Weston for one of our kids name uh, for for the boy. And I was like, I can't. This was for Reed. Uh, And I was like, I can't. And she's like, why? I'm like. The, this kid that my brother roommate that was was roommates with whose phone is that that's mine. not mine turn it off right now <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> he was roommates with for a little bit he he like turned into a psychopath where my brother didn't live there anymore left right and my brother calls me he goes nick i need your help i'm like what's going on and he goes I-, I moved out of my apartment because that kid like threatened to kill me blah 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 i'm like dude like okay um he's like can you just please go get my stuff I'm like, sure. Like thinking that this is just a ridiculous thing. Like they're just fighting about something. I walk into this apartment. This dude took bleach. Gallons of bleach. And went around his entire room and soaked everything in bleach. Did he murder someone in there? No, he just, no, he just, he stained all the clothes, all the bedding. He had ripped the giant painting my brother had on the wall. Like I was like, yo, that, that dude, that dude needs help. So I'm like, yeah, not not going to go for Weston. <laughs> I I can't do that, man. No longer the name. Or if it, no. or if it rhymes with something where I'm like, nah, I can't name my kid that because this is just what they're going to get called the whole time. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like your name, Nick. Yes. We're not like, going to say it on the podcast. Like, man, who told you that? <laughs> I think your wife. <laughs> oh, Meg. Yeah. I like following her. She's yeah, funny. A lot of people do. <laughs> I'm like, Meg, you like you got a lot of fans. She goes, What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, I know, I know you you're not I my follow both of your wives, so there's that. <laughs> I only have one. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, Tyler's too, because she's I know. I'm just kidding. Creative and fun and all the things. Yeah. All right. So Morgan, you graduated from college in Long Beach, or you're from Long Beach, or both? Uh, I gr- look at you, Tyler, doing all the there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated college from Long Beach, California, fashion and marketing. And then I'm from a town called Rosa, Minnesota, which is right by Canada. So that's why you went to Long Beach. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Was it it's- like, I just got to get the heck out of here and try something new? Obviously, West Coast, East Coast, very strong fashion, all of that stuff. But like, were there other reasons for doing that? I would say when I, I always like to say I'm privileged. I came from a very wonderful family out of Rosa, Minnesota. And my parents gave me every opportunity that I wanted to do. And so I said, I went to two years at Moorhead State at MSUM. And then after that, I was like, I need something bigger and better. And my parents, without a doubt, said, we'll help support you with whatever you need. And I found this school in Long Beach, California. And they said, without a doubt, go there. We'll pay for everything. 
so I will own that <laughs> and went there and yeah, went to school there for fashion merchandising, marketing, and then quickly with that story being said is my dad passed away very quickly within 24 hours. I got a phone call from my granddad that oh said, you have to get on a plane right now. Your While you were in college? Yep. Or I just... After you college. were still in California. I was still in California. But he just said, you have to get home right now. Within 24 hours, your dad's going to pass away. Here's your flight. I took a flight home. He passed away. And after that, I just kind of rechecked my mentality of what I'm doing in life, period. And so it just made me think a little bit deeper about all the things. And did you yeah. come home at that point? So after that, I came home for the funeral, uh, did all those things, and then went back, thought about life deeper, came back to Minnesota, actually with a guy I was dating, and he moved back to Minnesota with me, and about six months later, I was like, what am I doing with him here, and we still laugh about it to this day, because I have Every breakup has been a good friend of mine. <laughs> and then, <laughs> not joking, six months after we broke up, Jamie and I met, and he was flipping homes, and here we are. <laughs> See, that's what, you, I guess there just wasn't a big uh, fashion industry in the, the Minnesota market up near Canada, <laughs> you know? Well, so, I would say I moved to Minneapolis, <laughs> did all that stuff. I did merchandising. I also worked for a few years doing recalls for big corporate boxes like Target, Walmart. Sounds Red like Bob. fun. Yeah. I know all the <laughs> things. But yeah, I met Jamie along the way at a dive bar and we hit it off. <laughs> so what was the idea for you? Obviously, like you had kind of said, a different start, try something different. Your parents were going to help support you along that way. But did you see a future for yourself in California when you're making that decision? Or was it just like, I got to get the hell out of here and try something new? No, I would say I miss California. And that's a big dream of ours right now. But I would say we left or I left California just because I thought about family. Yeah. And what does that look like? And I was single in all the things. And so when I met Jamie and he was flipping homes and then we quickly, I was like, so Jamie rewinding back, he has a degree in carpentry and he always wanted to be a builder. And then my background was fashion merchandising and marketing. And so once I kind of met him, we were dating. I was like, I was blown away by his talents, what he was doing. I was like, this is amazing. It's so cool. And not a lot of people know about this. This was 2012. And so I started documenting everything that he was doing organically. And again, he went to school for carpentry. I always wanted to be a builder. So it's like one thing kind of led to another. And so I was kind of, I don't want to say behind him, but yeah pushing him, I guess, to yeah. be like, let's go, let's go. Like, let's do this. How can yeah. I help support you? I'm sure because I think that most <laughs> carpenters, builders, remodelers, uh, maybe the past five years has been different, but I think for the most part, they never did a good job of marketing themselves, documenting what they were doing. And that's kind of the last thing on their mind where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm in the middle of sweating this out, banging my head against the wall right now. Like, let's document this. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm sure that uh, that probably was, I don't know. Uh, Nick always did a good job of doing that. And looking back, I feel as though was ahead of the curve, but it probably takes a unique situation like that, like yours with your background to come in and be like, this is really cool content. This is marketable. Mm -hmm. um, and we could, we could tell a story here. Um, because I think that's typically the last thing on carpenters or tradesmen's yeah. mind. One, well, yeah, Nick probably wants to say something. No, well, <laughs> I, I mean, 
I very much took a cue from like the marketing realm when I started <clears throat> documenting everything I was doing. I mean, it, I've talked about before, but Vaynerchuk was a big inspiration for that. You know, I used to watch his daily V's or in it where he was just documenting what he was doing every day. I'm like, oh, I find it interesting to know what a day in life looks like for him. I wonder if people would find it interesting what I do. And then I realized that everything I was watching was very much like seeing behind the curtain on how people run things. And yeah, I mean, that that's what made me want to share what I was doing. Um but I'm curious, like when you, so when you saw, you know, when, when Jamie's flipping homes and you decide to to document it, was it immediately this, hey, we let's build a story around this, or was it just like what what is, the, I guess my question is, what was the early construction to style content like? What did that look like? Oh gosh, so I'd say early on. Cause he was investing in this home without me. We were dating at the time. Yeah. And so he was doing everything without me, but I was just blown away by what he was doing. So I just started asking him, how are you laying this tile? Why are you choosing the paint colors? How do you take down the wall? And really what it came down to, and I think this is why we kind of exploded was he bought a house for $90,000 in 2012 Mm-hmm. He invested $30,000 into it. He did everything himself and we sold it for $190,000. Nice. And during that time we got married. That's what kind of supported C2S. Led to, we did three more flip homes and now we're living in their final home. I shouldn't say that because who knows, we might build <laughs> another house. Uh, but I would say that's what started it is just the curiosity and me asking him from someone that doesn't know where Jamie kind of knew, but he didn't know at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause he was a newbie, but he also went to school for carpentry. So he had these big dreams and goals and all that. But I always laugh too. Cause I'm like, Oh, here he thought he was going to be a builder out of the door. Right. Like that's what college teaches you. That is not what college teaches you. (laughs) And so he truly thought that though. And he got out of the college recession. He's like, oh, I have no job, no work, no nothing. So he scooped up this home because he's smart, saved his Mm -hmm. money, lived with his parents, granted younger. Even when I met him, I was like, you're living with your parents. I'm slightly terrified. Um, (laughs) Even though they're wonderful people. Let let the record show. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We still laugh about it to this day. Um, But yeah, it's just like through that, being smart, saving, I don't know. And I just think us together too, we're always thinking about the industry as a whole. And I just keep thinking and saying too, it's like, every person lives in a home or they don't, they're homeless and they need a home. Every person needs a home in their life. Mm -hmm. So, well, how do we do that better for all of us? Right. And so that's what our whole motto has been for C2S, honestly, because that's where my heart is. So, so you just went down a completely (laughs) different path, which is totally fine, but I'm curious. Like I am ADD, Nick. You already know that. I know. And that's what I love about you. Um, But, but, But I'm going to ask again, like the content when you started, like I get how you got, you got it out of Jamie. Like I can imagine like you asking all these questions, but what was like, what was your goal with it from a content marketing perspective? Were you look, were you like, Hey, why are you laying the tile that way? And then you were going to post a photo of it or Hey, why are you laying the tile that way? Cause I want to go write a blog about what you're doing. Like what? So from the beginning, Nick is. I would literally just ask him what he's doing, why he's doing it. And then I talked about it and I shared it. I didn't ask any questions. uh, So this was his first flip house. No, no, no. Where were you sharing this? Oh, on our blog. Okay. Everything on our blog. And that blog. Our website. I'm a huge advocate of everything goes back to your website. Totally. And we're going to get to the technical side of it. But so like 
Clark and Aldine who just chimed in. They said, "Hey, friends, hey." Um, but th- like they started, like she started the blog first, which adapted into you know yeah. the home renovation blog. Was was this? Did this blog exist for Morgan? For you? No, for our team. So, so construction but, of style. I started it with when, us too. So when you guys bought that first flip home for for. Ninety thousand dollars. I think Jamie bought it. I started the website. So at the we're same actually, time. Yep, so you guys insane. were dating. Yeah, yeah. So you guys it's were dating. It's actually insane. And he bought this house, <laughs> and you were like, "All right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start a blog, and we're Correct. gonna document th- this house through the blog." And he and I and I know Jamie, but he's just like, okay, <laughs> like he's just so cash. Like I said, you know, like until you get to know him, like you're just like, is that is he mad at me? He's like, no, no, he's just chill, man. He's oh, just he like, loves you guys. <laughs> he, he's just like, but that's what, and that's what I like. But I said it to you before. Where it took like, a while for uh, Michael from Clark and Aldine to. He was like, oh, he actually likes me, and I was like, yeah. But I can just imagine, has. like, way back when you guys were dating, and like, you're like, I'm gonna start a blog, and he's probably like, okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go renovate this house because we need to I'm flip it. I'm wondering why he even married me. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> I'm sure there's a long, I'm sure there's a long list. So where did, so was it construct? Did you call it construction to style when you started that blog? We did. Yeah. And so uh, at that time we came up with the name cause he was construction. There was two of us and then style. So I was doing mm, fashion. So it had it. nothing to do with, and so I still hate the name. I hate the name so bad. Do we're you? Going through, I hate it so bad. We're going right. through two different branding companies right now Mm -hmm. to rebrand it and just the price tag on both of them. And then I don't even know. And even Jamie goes last week, he goes, let's talk to Nick's guy. (laughs) Cause he's like, they're all so feminine. Well, I mean, that's yeah, but you're like, I know Jamie's the face too, but I think you're like the main face. Of construction know, style, it's, which it maybe it would be style to construction, Ooh, rebrand. Like but but the, <laughs> so, and that's what I was gonna say. Like I had always thought <laughs> that the two was like a replacement of like T O. I know people and, think and, that, and, 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 and truthfully, not. like I don't ever, I don't like that. Like you know, I don't like when things are misspelled or like it's no. a, a Z instead of it. It was S. always saying two of two of us. So I can understand like the frustration you because you probably have had to explain it. And I've I've said before, like, I don't love my name. Like I actually like it was it was in my opinion, it wasn't creative. And every if someone doesn't know who our brand is, it's like, oh, is NS Nova Scotia or North Shore or <laughs> what Nova is it Scotia? I dude, I when get an I email once a week. Your for... podcast logo today. I was like, oh, you got a new logo on the circle mm-hmm. thing, but not other things. So I was well, like, we're, hey, whoa, whoa, we're, we're, there. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> uh, we had a meeting today about okay. the login information <laughs> that I lost four years ago. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I just asked, I just say, like, Catherine can you figure out like she 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 recovered our tiktok which was months and she was like hey i need to know she's my best friend too you know how you get those questions it's like hey have you ever been associated with these four dresses she's like asking me i'm like yeah i'm like uh i don't think so (laughs) she's like okay what about these six cars i'm like "Uh, i think i had that white one yeah and it's like (laughs) she's like nope wrong or and it was like oh what day did you like oh no you know what i got wrong is it asked, what day did you create your TikTok account? I'm like, the oh, day? God. Yeah. How can anyone figure that out? So apparently you can. There's, the, You can go back. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. She got it. Um, but going back to the branding. So in Nova Scotia, I get an email once a week. Like, hey, would you like to buy NovaScotiaBuilders.com? I'm like, no. Cause I'm Why not? not? Nova <laughs> <laughs> because the, the, those people are never going to buy it. Um <laughs> So uh, let's unpack that because I think that there's a lot of people that, you know, throw a name at a company to start the company. And we talk a lot about brand and marketing and how, how strong, like how important it is. And I've considered changing my name. I, I, I would say that maybe even today I would like consider it, you know, if, if there was something that made sense, 
you know, enough to where we could, you know, make the impact. Like, I, I'm scared. Have you ever shit. considered Tyler Nova Scotia builders? <laughs> Nova, Nova Scotia, Scotia builders. builders. I, I have not considered Think about that, it seriously, but I, the branding I still all works. It's not your yes. own name. So it's something, you know, you could pass on to future I could just change it to you North Shore it. Builders. Yeah, but Nova Scotia sounds more luxurious. It does. It's like, where do you build? Oh, Boston. Yeah. Nova Scotia. <laughs> Nova Scotia. Uh, so what? What's what's on your mind? I hate with... that this touches my sweater, by the way, because then I hear weird things. Sorry, this is the first time I've done these headphones. Already told you guys that. Maybe you shouldn't have worn the world's largest <sighs> turtleneck. <laughs> Amen, Tyler. <laughs> well, maybe you guys should put it in your disclosure. No Don't large wear turtleneck. No <laughs> large turtleneck. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you Unless didn't bring the disclosure. <laughs> um, do you know okay. what I do? You know, all right, hold on. <laughs> what I want to kind of know when you so you guys met, he's doing these house flips. You're totally on board with this. This is what you can kind of bring. Okay, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, you can you can bring this to the relationship, business, personal relationship, like your side of things, and you decide to start this blog. What did you have background in that? Like, how how was this kind of what you started doing? I would say I've always been a fashion person, right? So when it comes to fashion, to interiors, anything, I had a, like, it fills my cup. And it made me super excited. So when I met Jamie and he was flipping this house and everything he was doing, and I also had the marketing background, that's when I started talking about like, let's do the website. Let's do this. Let's start talking about you. Nothing was directed at me. It was directed at him and his craft and his trade. And again, was, was this to kind of build his, like, what was your intent behind it? Was it to build there was his no business? Intention. And I would say, this is something that our entire company has built around is that we're just, we lean on people that move us forward, trusting yes, people, uh, feels good people. Um, so actually when I met him to answer your question, like he always wanted to be a builder. I was not helping him frame the framework his company it was more so just to talk about all the cool shit he was so doing. then it was to promote his business and help him grow his business it wasn't it wasn't like well, that we hadn't started a business at that time but that was uh, this was all part of it right that this is yes. where he wanted to go and where he wanted eventually Correct. the trajectory of his career to be and this is what you saw as the first step of what you can bring to this relationship because you're not swinging hammers with him and kind of what you know to take it to the next step. I would say what you're saying, Tyler, is spot on, but I never knew that or thought that in that way. Yeah. I did that organically when he... That so it was step, just to win him over. You were looking to court no, him and you were like, I, think, no. I can make you a website. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I think he didn't even know because he was so young and immature as well. He did not know what he was doing, which is wild and crazy because we talk about that and we laugh about it. It's like, how do we get to this point from this point? Um, but this was always his goal. And I don't know. I always say God works in mysterious ways. So here I am. <laughs> All right. So you, <laughs> so, you, so you start the blog with this first, um, the first flip that you guys are essentially kind of doing together. Yeah. Um, I really had no hand in it though. It was like him yeah. by himself, but I just came in and started documenting it. Yes. And what did your following look like throughout that project? Did it grow pretty quickly? So we went from zero to family and friends. 
that's actually what I always talk about and say mm-hmm. is like our family and friends were following it. That's why I started. And then today, right now, it's 1.9 million a month. And that's what, what metric is that? <laughs> uh, people on the email page list? views. No page views. Yeah. Page views per month. And I was laughing because before we came on this episode, mm-hmm. we had a hacker and I was like, so we had, you know, you've made it. No. <laughs> well, thank you, Tyler. You get we had three weird blog posts and I was like sweating. I was like, you guys, Tyler's probably doing his research. I was like, I got to <laughs> get this down now. <laughs> Wait. So w- where are those page views counted? Uh, page views on each Organic. individual. I know, on but our indi- website. Like homepage? Correct. So well, 1.9 no, per. everything on our website. Per, is that per month you said? Correct, yeah. So one uh, 1.9 million page views across the entire website per month. Correct, yeah. And that, and, and so, okay. <laughs> uh, it, these we- are, these are the metrics that like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't really understand how then you compound on that where it's like i know in theory it's like well that's a lot of people and then you want to collect their email address and then get them on email campaigns and and then you know obviously social media and whatnot but so in that hold on uh, hold on how did we get from (laughs) friends and family to 1.9 yeah that's what i was was gonna (laughs) you took a big leap like when was this first project and what you know, like the growth of your blog, what did that look like? So we started from a DIY blog to design build. Now we're also doing uh, custom home builds right now. And so we just are reformatting 2023 of what that looks like, but we're yeah, going to do two to three new builds in the Twin Cities that are custom, one-of-a-kind homes. I always take deep breaths. Jamie always says, stop taking deep breaths when you're talking to people. But I'm always like, this you're is thinking. what we're doing. <laughs> this is what I'm going through as being a parent too, right? Um, but we're doing it. Like, I have no doubt in my mind. So right now, this next house we're doing on the Artisan 2023. We're going to do one home a year on the Artisan tour. We want it to be $3 million plus this year. We're going to do $5 million. Um, but then on that note, too, we're going to keep continuing on the design build. Nick's looking at me weird. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not looking at you weird. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. It's no, all I'm the good not... things. But I'm like, so on that note, I was going to say is we're, I'm not lying when I say we're going to change the industry as a whole when it comes to building, remodeling, everything. Because I truly believe, even last night I had a conversation with Mercury Mosaics. We talked about all of you guys and they're trying to figure out how to, make sure us as a core group or anyone that is in our core group or actually cares about the industry is putting tile into their home and how do we educate them to put tile under their home or cabinetry or countertops or all the things. And I'm like, I can see it. I can feel it. I can breathe it. We have a great group together that will do that together, whether it's building, remodeling. Um, <laughs> I, so when you guys kind of got going with this project and you started this blog and you're going down that path, <laughs> it obviously like blew up. Um, it's transformed into something completely different than what it was but i guess i kind of want to know more so like what that looked like getting there like you have this first project and you document this first project with him what does the blog look like when you're done that first project so you're talking about us doing the 
the flip. Yeah. So okay. like you're you're just hitting the ground running with this, and you're at this point in your life, your career, you haven't created content. Yeah, I love um, that. You, you really, you haven't marketed a business or anything like that. So at the end of this project, you went from point A to what point did you end up at when you finished that project? So I'd say, I think this is what you're saying. I might be misled, but we went from remodeling to building this house, correct? Um, more so like experience, right? You had, you went into this, you didn't have any experience with creating a blog with construction really. So that had to be, there had to be a ton of learning experiences for you from a, a personal level, a business level, as far as like, Hey, I'm walking onto this job day one that you just bought and I'm going to document this and create a blog for it. If that project took a year, what did construction to style look like at the end of that year? Did you have a hundred thousand followers? Were you getting good engagement? Did you understand how to market yourself from a blog perspective at that point? Kind of what did that growth look like within that project? Okay. Now I feel like we have to name a project to talk to. Um, We're just talking about the first one though. Okay. So I'll say that because now I'm thinking about what we've done. I mean, just even through this, <laughs> this, this first project with Jamie yeah, that, that he's flipping, like this was kind of the catalyst I like that, Tyler. and yeah. the, 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 the spark for both of your careers and for construction to style. So I'm just curious, like going from day one, when you walked on, you're like, Hey, I'm going to document this. To, to wrapping that project up, like you started at a, a very entry level with everything that you were mm-hmm. doing. And when you ended that project, you know, did you, did you already have a large following on your blog? What had you learned kind of along that way, as far as your marketing to kind of continue pushing down that road that you were on? Okay. So my answer is, uh, I showed up at a job site one day, Jamie bought a house for $90,000 and I thought it was a joke. I was terrified (laughs) and I watched him transform the thing. He spent $30,000 doing it himself within, we sold it for $190,000. After that, it led to another project with a basement finish and then he got his builder's license after that one thing led to another two with clients colleagues but since 2002 it has never stopped and now in 2000 2012 20 we're correct 2000 what is it you said 2012 right 2012 yeah okay not 2000 what did i say two yeah. 2002, 2012. Do yeah. I have to redo it? No. No, 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 no. Okay. I, just, I, made, I was like, wait, I thought this was, I thought we were on a 10 year. No, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes they make me redo it. No, 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 no. You're good. Um, and then, yeah. So at the end of 2012 is when he finished up this first project? Approximately. 2012, 2015. Okay, so he finished in 2015. What? (laughs) Okay, so like where (laughs) where did you guys stand at that point? Like, do you feel like you had an idea of how to market his business and run this blog in 2015? Like, did you learn enough over those two years to do that? I would say no. So 2015 is when I jumped ship after our second kid was born. Jump ship from a, a career, uh, like a full full career. career. Yeah. Yep, that supported our company, and then yeah, we just kind of went faster and moved faster on all the things. And did you did you jump <laughs> primarily because of the uh, because of the second kid, or because you realized that if you devoted more attention to the blog, it would allow you to grow the business? I jumped because after our second kid, I was like, I'm working full time at an agency. Mm -hmm. And then I have two kids. We want to have more kids. And 
I'm you, working full you, time. Hold on. You, want, <laughs> you wanted to have more kids. I yeah. wanted to have more kids. Yes. Jamie did not have one more kids. Jamie did not. He got <laughs> he another job. Too. But, yeah. Yes. And he so, will say that respectfully. <laughs> were you were you bringing in, were you monetizing the blog at this point or was it primarily driving business to your construction business? So uh, when we started our website, we made money from it. And... Uh, Right away? Right away. And that is the biggest thing I'll always say. That's why I drive people back to the website. And I listened to a recent episode of your guys's where Tyler said, I don't know if blogs were still a thing. And I'm like, money is still a thing there. You can make, well, I don't know. I shouldn't say more money, but free money uh, having a blog set up. So, How did you monetize right from the beginning? Because it was 2012, it was before blogs were a thing. Um, but that's how we got going. Because people, brands were coming to us, and Jamie and I both were like, immediately make- though? Immediately. That was before construction. That's how brands are a bigger thing to me to this day. Immediately. Were you seeking those brands <laughs> because of your experience? No, nothing. We had ad ads on our website and then brands started coming out to us to say let's do something bigger together picture things together and that's where my mind so in that first project that 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 first project that you guys that jamie flipped what brands were you working with on that so we didn't do any brand on that so did you make Uh, any money launch all the brand things. So we documented everything. Started taking these brands, talking so, about them. Got yep. it. For two years. Doing tutorials. You docu- yep. Yeah. So you like so you, you guys. built a yep. you built a backlog with that first project, and then 2015 Correct. is when you yes. launched into like, hey, now we're working. Brands know who we are, and now they want to work with us. Do you recall what type of following you had at that point in 2015? Uh, probably like 250 people. <laughs> So it was, they didn't necessarily care about metrics at that point. Correct. They just wanted, they just saw value in what you were doing. Yeah. Um, which is kind of what I was trying to figure out, like after that first project where you stood with things, you know, did you have a half a million people no. coming to your website? So no, it was w- literally like a hundred people, 250 so, people. So you yeah. were basically just creating the platform, but you didn't realize that you were creating the platform yes. for all of this. Oh, uh that. now we're on the same <laughs> it's like we're locked in now and we're basically one mind just going through the computer oh, to each I other know. <laughs> and my mind never shuts off and, yeah so, so bad, when bad hold drug. on so when, when you go to leave um your full-time job you have a second kid what was the goal for you? Like, was it really to push all of this social stuff and just continue with him doing the the building end of the business? No, not at all. Not even close. It's uh, the trust, support, moving forward, building our company, building our brand. And that's what we were doing. And I was like, I have no time to keep doing it while I work full time. So Yeah. So you were yeah. gonna help with all aspects of the business at that point. Yeah, we had nothing lined up, but yeah. That's insane. <laughs> but our whole company has been insane. So it's insane. It is so, insane. It's I awesome. Mean, <laughs> but to be able to all right, so to put that into perspective, to be able to leave a full time career. Uh, a professional career that you went to college for. Um, you have a formal education and to have a couple of kids, your husband at this point is self-employed to leave all of that and go work for a company that doesn't have work lined up. Like that's that if, if you lay it out like Amen. that, it's kind of, <laughs> And like, I, I think, okay, well, they must have had something going with the blog where it's like, I know that I can monetize this, 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 and this, and we have this much money on the table, but you're saying that none of that was up in the air. You were just like, Not I'm spending point, no. too much. Correct. You guys are crazy. <laughs> you're like, you're worse than Nick. <laughs> I appreciate that. 
No, it's even crazier. Well, 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 I think, I, I mean, know. this, this is what makes it so fun. And Morgan, like this is, you know, one of the things I, I like about you is obviously <laughs> like just, I mean, no, your energy. Right. And, and to think about, like, to think back to, you know, this first project and leaving your career, having a second kid, and then just going kind of launching all in on something that you believe in. Like you've, from day one, from the first time I met you, anytime that you've ever explained how you built construction to style, it's always rooted back to how impressed you were seeing Jamie work. And, you know, and Jamie will never say that out loud, but like, <laughs> but you do it, you, you, but you yeah. do it. And it's, and, and I know he, like, there's no doubt that, you know, I'm sure he appreciates that immensely, but it's like, I think when when Tyler says you're crazy, like, yeah, there there's crazy aspects of it, but that's the whole that's the whole part that's fun. And, you know, and, and I'm not going to I don't want what I don't want to do is I'm not trying to take the spotlight, but it's like I, I think of a similar story with myself is like there was a lot of risk when I started my business and there was a lot of stuff that I didn't have figured out. And a, a, a ton of stuff happened all at once that looking back, I'm like, even like to me, it was like, what the hell was I thinking? But 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 what was what I was thinking is that, well, I know what I want to do and I know that there's ways to do it. And when I have to turn the dial up on something, I can turn that dial up. And mm -hmm. and it sounds like for you guys, you know, Jamie's kind of he's in the he's in the right, you know, the middle lane and he's just cruising in construction. And, you know, he knew a job would be, you know, show up, you know, w when the time came. But you looked at it as like, well, I'll get in the left lane and I'll go find that job and have it prepped for you. And, and, and my understanding is like that you were doing that in the way of building these reputation, building the blog and building a reputation with brands. So not only, you know, were you promoting, you know, the work and, and, and the ability to work with construction to style, you were also on the back end making more money to kind of add to the bottom of the line for construction style. So, when you had to quote unquote compete for work, you know that there was going to be this back end of like, well, there's also marketing dollars we can make on it. So maybe you will have a little bit more room in this job and we can get more aggressive and take it because we quote unquote need the work. Mm -hmm. Is that like, is that a fair? Statement? I would say that's a fair thing. And then out, yeah, as you're saying that too, I'm like, <sighs> I just, I shouldn't say anything because I'm like, my mind's always turning. And then poor Jamie is like, because <laughs> I'm like, oh, we can be doing all these remodeler things, builder things. Well, so uh, like, so, <laughs> well, well, let's fast forward Which that. Tyler knows too. Yeah. But let's fast forward that. Like now you guys have a team, you know, you guys are very much, you know, design build. You, you primarily focus on remodeling. You want to get into new construction. What, like, what about you? We are. You, you are you already doing a new construction? You're working on one, yeah. right? Yeah. So you guys are building. You guys are going to GC and build the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Are you doing the design as well? Yeah, everything. So what, like, for for you, Morgan? Like, Which what is, is you also terrifying? We just want to do one thing a year to one not get into one project the... a year. Yeah. Correct. So wait, is the build on spec, or yeah. is it for? A, so it's on uh, spec. Yeah. So it's not for a client. <laughs> So are you getting away from the client work? We are, but we only want to do one a year. So, yeah. So, okay. Um, I didn't know that. Um, I thought the build was, I thought you've always worked directly with client. So we do, you're, but, you're, but, you're, <laughs> but, but you're, you're actively looking to be away from that. Well, uh, no, I don't think so. I just want to, we want to test the waters okay. to see what's happening. So when does that start? Uh, right now, we're going to have it on the tour, Artisan Tour in Minneapolis, 20 this year, June. So it'll be under you construction. Better, you better get going. No, we're already going. Oh, okay. Wait, it's going to uh -huh. be finished by June? Uh-huh. Wait. We, did, we haven't shared a lot about it. <laughs> Apparently. What, what stage are you at right now? So you must be you must be through framing, uh, right? Yeah. Framing's done. Hardwood floors are going in. Yeah. So you're Why? well past framing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait. It's going to be a surprise <laughs> to everyone. Hardwood floors are going yeah, Everyone's like, where did this just come from in the Minneapolis oh. metro? They're like, where did this just come from? I'm like. How long have you been working on it? year and a half. 
So it'll be a two-year project when all said and done? It's going to be done in March this year. So two years, nine months. So, yeah, correct. I mean, a, year one, project. a year yeah. and nine months. Um, so we want to be at the new in Minneapolis. So is Here it... We are. <laughs> So you're so you're you're taking a similar approach to what I've been talking about is building a product. So you want like you want people to drive by and say, "Oh, that's a construction style house." Yes. So yep. all right. Yes, all right. 100%. All right. So you you say And you, we're you say, thinking in a lot bigger things. I don't know if I should say this on the podcast. A lot weirder bigger things too. Weirder. No, I've now heard. you have to say it. Talk talk no. weird. Let's get let's get weird. Well, I'm just saying everything with builders remodelers two different approaches, right? But I want to blow the industry up. I'm just going to say that. And I want to own it with people that are good, forward thinkers, uh, smart, kind, loving people. What don't you like about the industry? I want to know what's weird about uh, that. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I think it's what weird. I don't like is weird is that these turtleneck right now. That turtleneck. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you store food in that thing. You got, oh, like, you got this at Goodwill. You got like Can a baby I just in there. Take this off. <laughs> I yeah. can't actually. Um, I'm over. Uh, I don't even know if I want to say this. All right, old so old money. I want your the over next what? Gen- old old money. money. I'm gonna say that. Okay. I'm fine, confidently saying that. Uh, next generation. I'm just so excited about what we can all do together. Forward thinkers, mm-hmm. uh, bigger picture. How I say too with like people. Every single person needs a home. Lives in a home thinks in their home right Mm -hmm. like it's mental health in your home Mm -hmm. and how are we creating that for them Mm -hmm. and i truly believe that the people that we hang out with think deeper about that maybe not but so that being said that project has to be a completely separate entity from your business correct Okay, because I'm thinking your business, right? The the (laughs) scale. And like, is the driver there because you want to be able to do more? And what you're doing with your business and the scale of your business, your reach is limited. Correct. I love you. Um, So Tyler has a way with words. (laughs) He does. He's so good. No, so. So what what do you feel is driving that desire to impact more than who you are right now? And it doesn't even have to be on a business level, it can be on a personal level. Like is that just I would who say, you are? Oh, I love that question, Tyler. Is everything that we put into a home for our clients is intentional. And if it's not, I don't want to put it into their home. Or we're even looking at clients when it comes from the first questionnaire. We have a questionnaire that asks them all these questions. And then I'm like, if they don't meet the match, I don't want to work with them. Know what I mean? And so even these spec homes we're doing, I want them to be true spec homes that we want to actually do, showcase, share for other things. So, then, our building, so. so why not just, I guess you want to start a completely separate entity business or proceed with that, but you also have this business that you're so passionate about. So what's preventing you from putting all of your energy into just construction to style as a builder versus like, why are you looking to do more? What's What's the motivation and what's the inspiration there for you, right? You have a successful blog. You have a successful social. Uh, your your business is successful. So why, like, what's what makes you want so much more as a person? Oh, my gosh. That's so good. Can we take a five-minute break? Sure. <laughs> so I can go pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we're live. I'm not even joking. Go ahead. (laughs) Morgan is so funny. 
that she's this awful. this is she's off the rails. She's she's crazy, but in in, in so many f- good funny ways. Um, yeah. So if you're tuning in on YouTube, we have our first ever guest live P. P. <laughs> I mean, I always have to. You do, but not. I guess I'm but, not gonna lie. But, but, but the guest never. I think we've had one, and that was the episode we didn't air. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm curious. Obviously, as you can kind of tell from listen, like her mind goes in a million different areas at once. Wrangling that in, taming that, um, has like there has to be direction there. But when she does have a direction where she wants to go, she puts a lot of her effort there, and I think can kind of buckle down and focus. And I'm just curious with the stuff that she's doing with you, and then her own brand. Like, why take on more? Right? Is it is it a financial decision? Um, is it because you just want more for yourself is you just want more out of life? What's, what's the driving force behind that? Yeah. I mean, uh, like, I also want to understand, like she says old money and wants to blow up the industry and like change things, but like what specifically, like, I know for us, you know, like we want to build a product because I want to change like the ability of like, there's just not the product that we want to build doesn't exist. You know, or it does, or it's not as, as, as obtainable for everyone. So, well, she's back. Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Put your headphones on so we can talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Sorry. So, 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 no, that's okay. We're we right back. Questions. We're right back to it. But what I, what I want to know is like, you have so much on your plate with a successful business and blog and family and everything that's going on what is the inspiration the motivation behind you wanting to continue to go bigger and better like why 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 do more so sad what's sad what's sad i said that's so sad no i mean but is is it like have you always just wanted to do more or is it is it that you feel is you have a higher potential there's more impact that you can have a greater impact on people like there's got to be something is it is it a financial decision no i would say it's well to me it's giving back to the community more and like life and people and i just have a heart and desire for like bigger picture and we kind of talked about that with uh both of you of the home and all that but and that's what you're getting into when you say yeah you're looking to get away from building for people like a lot of times if we build right i'm i'm working for older customers yeah. who are able to afford what we are able to afford and i limit my exposure to who i can work for um yeah so and I've had this conversation with Nick and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but trying to kind of articulate what is going on in your head without actually knowing what your plans are. But like I sit sometimes on jobs and I'm down whatever type of work I'm doing. And I think to myself, like, is this where I'm supposed to be in life? Is this where I'm creating Mm -hmm. the, the biggest impact for my life? And for a long time, I felt as though it was because what drove my social was the education and what I was putting out. And then that kind of got lost in the mix and it's more about views and you know, what's marketable Mm -hmm. and, and click throughs and all of that. And I think that a lot of the intent and the expression um, and the art of what we do got lost and it's more about what's going to attract people's attention and hold it. And I think to myself, like I have more to offer than sitting in this basement, filling nail holes we're doing mm-hmm. trim and like what's my greatest impact and i look towards my partnership with nick and with doug and the modern craftsman more so than my own personal brand to kind of facilitate mm-hmm. that growth that impact that exposure is this kind of what this secondary project and what you're thinking as far as blowing up the industry is doing for you it's just going to kind of maximize your reach and put you in touch with people that you wouldn't directly work with on the the construction end of things oh gosh okay i'd say there's two folds to that so one is this house that we're doing is going to be different set us apart from the industry because we're actually 
my husband, and this is something that even this morning, he's laying tile and he shouldn't be laying tile, but he does that endlessly. <laughs> Some days when the job is tirelessly, you know, mm. not Self, giving back. Self-performing. Yep, self-performing. Um, but this new build even sometimes we think it'll get us to the next level. I don't know if it will. Um, but with that being said too, I read a few of your guys' posts, um, listened to the podcast earlier today. And I'm just like, I can't get over my head about Twitch. I don't know if you guys followed him. Um, but he was another guy that just committed suicide this week. And I've said things to Jamie about not that he's, about to commit suicide, but I'm just like, Tyler, I loved your post this week is like, we don't check in with our men regularly. Um, and so, yeah, that was a thing that's been like heavy on my heart all week long and even today. And I'm just like, all the work that our industry does as a whole, is insane and people don't give credit for and yeah even jamie it's like he doesn't want to be in the field that long right but it's like he is tirelessly all the things anyway i just took that <laughs> down <laughs> no and i think that 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 is obviously important and i think that what people don't understand, right? If you're looking to do one build a year, what you're able to make um, and the impact that you're able to have within your life and within this building industry is very limited. Um, and I think that there are other opportunities out there to continue developing your network and growing your network and make a viable living that, do, you know, your construction business doesn't necessarily need to be your main source of income. Um, there's other opportunities to kind of grow that business and grow what you're doing still within our industry and have a greater impact um, than what you're doing. You know, what Nick did for years was hands-on carpentry and he did have an impact on a lot of people, one of which was me, but then he wanted more than that and he took the next step. And now, you know, within his business and who he's working for and the content that he's putting out, he makes a living doing what he's doing with his business. But that's not, you know, he's not putting all of his eggs in that basket. Um, and I think that his impact is so much stronger and more diverse now doing what he's doing than when he had a tool belt on kind of working for himself. And I think that you probably have an ability with what you're looking to do to impact more than one family per year when you're building a house for them. Yes. I'm just thinking about all the men out there. That's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I did not think you're going gonna go down that train. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, no, I, 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 that's not my thought at all. I, I, it's something that we talk about a lot and I think it's really important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you touched on the fact that there's so many people out there and I think what you were alluding to with Jamie laying tile, it's like, yeah, he's there doing it, but you know, who appreciates that? And yeah, it's like, for sure. For, you know, he doesn't could, want to be there right now, but, but he has to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, for, for many reasons, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have the person to do it, the, the trade, you know, wh whatever the case is. But the fact of the matter is it's like the, the appreciation isn't for Jamie. The appreciation is for mm -hmm. the house that's complete. You know, Correct. it's like I want and and for the price and the time frame in which you know someone hoped to get it. And I think that's probably a large reason why you're looking at doing spec rather than working for client. Where it's like let's remove the appreciation that is oftentimes uh, discredited during you know a custom build, and let's wrap this up into uh, a new build that someone would be ecstatic to buy. Mm -hmm. And then we can tell the story about all the all the men and, and women involved with the process in which it took to get here. Mm -hmm. And on that, 
Sorry, Nick, finish, finish, finish. No, it just like, I think that that's where, you know, Morgan, that's my understanding of like why you're trying to quote unquote blow up the industry and like in, yeah. in, in talking to you, like mental health is something that you you've written about, you've blogged about. Mm -hmm. I, I, I apologize. I'm not exactly sure the, 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 uh, who you're related to that struggled with it, but I know that there's, you know, people that are very close to you that have struggled with it. And, you know, and that's, you know, that's real. And that, and, and, and then in the industry, it's, you know, it's something that is not talked about mental health, you know, is something that we all struggle with. You know, mm -hmm. we talk about it on mic and Tyler and I talk about it off mic. And of course, off mic is probably a lot deeper than on mic. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, like the, the reason I say that is oftentimes it's just you know it's not it's there, there's not enough effort in it and, and without sound like a soapbox or like cry, crying you know poor me it's the fact that no this is a very hard industry and 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 there's unnecessary pressures on it all the time uh and you know and what timing right now is like you know when this podcast is live it'll be I guess it will be Christmas, right? Or maybe just after yeah. Christmas. But, um, you know, this is a perfect example. Like the holidays are incredibly stressful for people. You know, it's like outside of our industry, the holidays create stress for everyone, like buying gifts and, you know, and, and feeling as though that they need to show their appreciation for people through the act of buying a gift. And is the gift good enough? And did I spend enough money? But then it's like related directly to our industry. It's this made up you know demand to get things done by quote unquote christmas and then when you know it can't it, there's it's frustrate there's frustration or we just had a, a one of our crews they worked all weekend in efforts to get this house done for uh before christmas for christmas eve and we knew it was going to be tight and we had to communicate today like despite our efforts we're not going to make it we're just not happy with the quality and we can't we're not going to rush this and the client's understanding, but, you know, not every client's going to be like that. A lot of clients are, you know, are going to demand more. It's like, get more people here. Do 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 it better. Um, when the reality is, is the moment holidays come and go, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah, you can go back to your normal work. Oh, by the way, I don't want to pay for all that extra work. Like, you didn't hit your deadline. Morgan, do you guys still have your nonprofit? Yeah. <laughs> sure do. And um, what's that called? So resilience to reform. And yeah, long story short is my brother was incarcerated for uh, 10 years. And then, uh, yeah, we started read, writing letters to one another uh, through that. And how it so kind what, of blew up. what's the gist of the nonprofit? Like what, it, what's your goal with it? The goal is every quarter we send money to different people right now. We're sending it to the war in Ukraine and a lot of people think the war is over. It's not over. So we're still continuing to send money there. We have something on our website that you can see it, it says donate now. Um, and thank you, Tyler, for bringing that up. But for yeah. sure. I guess just tell us a little bit more about, and you don't have to get into kind of why you started it unless you want to. Um, I'm open to hearing about that, but just like <laughs> kind of what the the mission statement is for that whole nonprofit, kind of like wh why you started it, what it's about. We started it because uh, my brother, my younger brother got into drugs and started selling drugs. He was crossing, crossing uh, state lines, which that makes you federal. So he went to prison in Detroit and it was terrifying for our entire family. So he got sentenced to 10 years in prison, federal prison. How old he was a, he when this happened? He was 18. And he, no. start, he started doing drugs before? He started doing drugs 16. And we have written every blog post on C2S, RDR, everything is public knowledge. Um, 
And then, yeah, he went to prison after Jamie and I got married. So we almost expedited our marriage because of him. I shouldn't say that, but we, Jamie proposed to me and then we got married in four months. That was 2012 too. Did, and then, so yeah. he, he started, um, like when he started doing drugs, was it just more recreational, like kind yes. of typical? introduction yep. to drugs it's like and then, anyone smoking weed doing all the things that and are then cool, it, right? pro- <laughs> it probably like are there addiction issues within your family other oh, than 100%. him yep. yeah um yes. and was he aware of that yes so um usually the way that that works and again correct me if i'm wrong but mm. you start kind of being introduced to drugs alcohol whatever it may be and then you find out that you like it and then at some point to be able to fund your habit, you start dealing it um, because you can make money doing that. And also you have a lovely supply of drugs correct. at that point. Yep. So is that kind of the the roadmap for him? I would say it correct, but no one in our family did that. Okay. So, just, yes. just him. Okay. Just him. But... Um, and that was from like 16 till 18. Uh, no, so he graduated from the U of M in college. Okay. And then what I always like to say too is my dad died and that's when I came back from California to Minnesota and that's when all hell broke loose with our So he was, he was functioning. I mean, if he graduated from U of M, then he had to be a pretty functioning Correct. drug addict. Correct. Um, Look at you. <laughs> I mean, it, but correct. It, yes. I mean, you a lot right. of drug addicts are, are, are probably not making it into college. And then if they get into college at some point, they're like, oh, this is for the birds. Yeah. Um, correct. So r- listening to that as an outsider, <laughs> there's you, you said crossing state lines. So there is kind of, hey, if this was within state, maybe there wouldn't have been such a heavy hand. Do you feel as though they made um, an example out of him? Like, was your yes. brother as bad as... a lot as... of things that we're doing right now at Ardar that we're going to hopefully re-correct, but yes. So in your mind, your brother wasn't necessarily like this drug lord that needed no. however much prison time that he no. got. no. Um, and what was your jail. relationship with your brother like when he went to jail? Like, were you guys close at that point? Oh, yeah. I would see him three times a year. And Jamie and I always even laugh. And, like, it was just his birthday on December 9th. We would see him every single year for seven years. And so Jamie and I were like, oh, interesting that we don't have to do this before Christmas. You know, don't yeah. have to do everything because we did that to Detroit, to South Dakota. Mm. So what was he like, 21 Um, or 22 when he got put in jail? He was 22, 27 to 27, yes. So five years. That's crazy. No, it was seven years. So, and this sounds awful, but this is going to be on the record. Uh, COVID, he got out early. Otherwise, he would have had more years. More time. And then we had a ton of people online blasting us because they're like, oh, he's a white male. Mm. He should have been in earlier. Yeah. And I was like. So what, like, as that's kind of happening for you and you're you're committed to maintaining this relationship with your brother, was he reaching out to you for help as far as, like, to help his cause? Is that part of the driver for this uh no. nonprofit? No. So we during this is what the nonprofit started from is during this time we started writing letters to one another. Yeah. To say he started by sending something to me and going, uh this is my story. Forgive me. And then I wrote him one back and I shared that on construction style. Yeah. And then we went back and forth. So he wanted no intention of blasting it, I guess you would say. And then even now to this day, so we're starting this nonprofit, even re-figuring it out. Um, But he wants nothing to be a part of it because he's like, that was my past. I want to move forward. 
So now we're finding people that can move forward with this cause. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did he get sober? Yes. He's, and he's married, has a baby. And he, he does, does he, did he move close to home? Yeah. He's right here in Minnetonka. That's cool. And five years sober right now. But he even talks about it in the blog post. Yeah. He could have drugs and alcohol in prison. Oh, yeah. That's... Usually it's like the worst <laughs> place for it. Like, Wait, it's the easiest what? Access. Yes. And I'm like, so he admits it, right? How do you get it? it? I mean, typically like, there's, there's like a ton of, yeah, it's like yeah, the easiest like, thing easy. to get. It's easy? So he's been sober since coming out because he's like, I wasn't with and, those yeah. wild animals. So, which pisses me off about many things that we're trying to do at Art R. Um, well, I mean, rightfully so, uh, that's what you're put in jail for. And then they basically, in so many words, it's allow so that to up. proceed and while you're so in jail. Another thing, this is live. Um, we're going to have it on something. I don't know. Maybe it's your guys's podcast. Uh, one of their, uh, security guards literally said how they get things in. He quit. And he said he'll go on the microphone for anything that we want to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was I... That's crazy. The... <laughs> um, so <laughs> when your brother actually gets out. Um, he is out. I mean, yeah. So I'm kind of going back and prefacing what I'm going okay. to ask you by like, what was that experience like for you? Was we it... did a whole YouTube video on it. I'll send it to you. Um, I almost died. I cried. I did a whole thing. I was driving in there and I was like, I'm crying right now. I was pregnant with Ellie, recorded everything, recorded the whole drive, recorded going out, recorded, yeah, Noah talking about wearing jeans for the first time. What was the reception like on your blog being that you have a pretty specific um, target audience and all of a sudden you're kind of posting this stuff that I have a good reception? good reception yeah like and very also supportive. i don't give a shit about what anyone thinks to be honest. sure <laughs> but like you could see obviously that like people being like well we signed up for this and now we're getting that um, well and my people... biggest thing too is even to this day i told noah our biggest blog posts are uh we have two blog posts how to get into prison what to wear in prison people don't know I don't. I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to get into prison. I know. Or really but find we have out what these to wear, blog but... posts, and I'm like, there's no education on what you're yeah. saying, right? Like the people that need to get there, what to do. I'm like, it's just all super sad. So, um, so what, <laughs> what, um the your nonprofit that you have going now obviously this this had to be a pretty big motivator for kind of getting up and running with that um i want to know what you guys are actually doing specifically to help people like in this position like are you finding individuals is it more of a kind of a broader help that you're looking it's a broader help yeah okay so you're looking to possibly steer people in the direction of help so right now, and I'll be clear about this, and mm. probably it's with you guys too, because I'm like, I'm always thinking deeper, bigger pictures, and I have no idea sometimes, but I would say every quarter we're looking to do something bigger picture. And honestly, I can say that with my gut and heart is like, it's going to be with people like you guys and the readers, the followers, the listeners, Tell us where to do the money, what to think about, what to do more things about. Um, so kind of who's who's your target as far as, um, I don't want to say. There's no target. Because so my it's, target it's is any, life. Anyone, life. <laughs> anyone, in, anyone who could possibly be in need of help Correct. or struggling. Yes. 100%. Can I, can I sign you. up? Can I sign yes. up? <laughs> Tyler, you cannot much, sign up, but yes. How, how much you money can. you look how much money you looking to send? I could I could I could I could plead a pretty good case, I think. Uh, 
just lay it all out there. I love you a lot though, but um, no. so I mean, where, I'll help you if you actually need that. <laughs> now, where, where can people, where can people find this if they, they want to look into it more and we can obviously uh, link it in the show notes. Yeah. Resilience to reform.com construction style.com. And every, everything goes back to the website. Yeah. All right. So the, everything what's, what's your website. website. So if everyone wants to find everything, Morgan, where are they go? Construction.com. Resilienceterraform.com. Construction. Or contractorcoalition.com. <laughs> nice plug at the end there. Yeah. We and didn't even guys, get, we didn't even get into that. And you guys are taking on new customers, just limited, correct? Yes. And you have so, to be young and not be old. And we're also launching a media company that snobby. I have to talk to Nick about because I'm like, oh, this is stressing me out, Nick. Yeah. It is stressful. I I have one. I want I, a dog. Well, you I can't want have, Chelsea to be my dog, though. Topher. That you could you could definitely ask Chelsea to be your dog. You cannot ask my dog to be your dog. No, I know that. But I'm I know saying, I know you know that. <laughs> but it has to be a new company, and so I now know. Jamie's joke is, we're trying to come up with this name, and he goes Motif Media. I'm like, stop. It's not even funny. Anymore. Motif to. <laughs> Motif to construction to style. He actually said that. <laughs> I was like, that's not funny anymore. <laughs> well, there, there are multiple motif medias out there. I know that. Um, uh, Morgan, I do have one question I want to go back to before we wrap up. Um, you, the name of your company. So yeah. you, you're promoting construction to style. Obviously, I know that nothing is in, like immediate. But what is your thought about like you, you, you're talking about working with multiple branding companies is the goal to rebrand at that level uh like, yes so right now we're thinking about seven different companies that we could fly off into got it so now we're thinking about all the names and it's stressful but Interesting. Yeah, and I then mean... jamie is always like don't put the two because it should be uh something that people don't know it's not our brand so yeah so that's real so hot like when it's real when we're do you, doing it right now and we're when and talking when do you to lawyers everything so when do you think you'll launch the new name i hope in the next year okay. i don't know but also we want so we want the yeah design build team we're thinking about a design team so you're media you're, team. Yeah, so you're basically like taking everything that you guys have been working on since t 2012 Correct. and then and finding, you know, almost like creating little silos. Like here's the media silo, here's yep. the design silo, here's the build silo, here's the development silo and so on. And Correct. and and basically building this, you know, in other words, like holding company that has all these these other quote unquote LLCs. Correct. Yeah. I mean, but then simple. also what it's like you have to think about the money side from lawyers. Oh yeah, accountants, right? Yeah. Like all yeah. these things too. So, well, that's where my brain's going. I'm, ha right I'm happy. I'm happy to share <laughs> the 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 uh, the the easy and difficult parts of doing that. At least for the few silos that we've created. Oh, but boy. I mean that's a great segue into what you just alluded to the construction. I mean, the contractor coalition summit, that's a lot about what we talk about from a business mm -hmm. perspective, how we run our businesses, how we've structured our businesses from a legal contra contractual side, customer side. Uh, and if you want to see Morgan live, talk about how she, we didn't even get into like the, the, the statistics on how you take that blog and how you're creating 1.9 million viewers to your website a month. But, Morgan walks through that in depth and gives you all of the secrets. Uh, and that, that summit will be in Scottsdale, Arizona. You can find more information at contract at coalition summit.com. And I just love Tyler so much. Thank I saw you. his naked booty on the back. End. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> not on the pot, not on the podcast. Oh my God. This live. <laughs> oh, my it God. is. I mean, you, I can't really consider you a friend if you haven't seen, my butt oh wow we're super I friends huh butt. yeah <laughs> that means i'm a super i told my husband he was like 
I paid a lot of money for that and went through a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. I might as well. We'll put that in the show notes too. He, he sends me a photo. He's like, I got, I, I got I a little update. It. I'm like, I, dude, you got to tell me where I'm looking for this update because I'm not zooming in, looking around, comparing it to the last photo you sent me. And he's or like, what part of your body that we left, just want him to left drop butt with that cheek? Butt anytime we have a something. I could. I, could. I don't know. I don't for know a, what it for is. A fee. It's great. It's beautiful. For a fee. <laughs> Well, you can you can head over to Tyler's OnlyFans and you'll get his. Uh, <laughs> now you got pictures. me thinking. Dude, I bet people I will pay for a it. Butt silo. Mm-hmm. Actually, Jamie said that he goes, "You should show your feet, which my feet aren't oh, great, my- but I guess there's <laughs> weird stuff out there." <laughs> he goes, "And Tyler's butt together, you guys can make millions." We're, be done. That's it. We'll get to retire. That's it's my the- that's my greatest impact in life. <laughs> Where are we going, guys? What are we doing? Sorry, that's how, Nick. That's how I, just, I reach. That's I how I mess. So no, I it's, it's listen. Feet Finder, I hear is, is great Jamie money. Yeah. Their approval. Yeah. He's yeah. smart. You got to come up with one of the business name for that, though. <laughs> I don't want the two in the middle of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you guys. Okay, bye. Well, well thank you. <laughs> no, Morgan, you're great. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Oh wait, before you go, you gotta do oh. our you gotta do a quick intro. So we're Tyler oh. and I are gonna shut up for a quick second. All you gotta do is oh, introduce okay. yourself, say that you're on the Modern Craftsman podcast, quick give a quick blurb of what we're talking about. Uh, and that's it. So ready? One, two, three. Wait, what are you saying? I'm not say saying it again. Anything. You're gonna say oh, it again. You're gonna do the intro. Sorry, Doug. That's, no, you're good. I'm Morgan Molitor, and I'm here on the modern podcast nope i didn't say right that's okay you can do it again Modern we can cut all the craftsman stuff. podcast right yeah and then just give a quick blurb of what what we talked about today oh my gosh You're why good. don't you guys do this oh you know what we can feed it to you all right so nick who's our guest today you know what nick let's just ask the guest herself who's our guest today come on who's our guest morgan it's you <laughs> morgan line Lying. I'm crying because I just talked about uh, Tyler's butt. Sorry, Tyler. Sorry. So who, uh, who's our guest today on the podcast? It's who? I'm Morgan Molitor. And what's your business? Construction Style. And what's your blog? Construction Style. And where can we, and where can we find you? Where can we find you? Okay. I can do this. Oh! You got it. I have to take this off. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Can we do it? Yeah. You have as much time. Is it easier if Nick and I disappear? No, here. no she it. can't. Now she can't hear us. Oh. You're good. We're going to be quiet and you go for the intro. Okay. And you have as much time as possible. Oh my gosh. No, not really. You just have to get my kids. Okay. Oh, I say your name wrong. Modern, Modern Craftsman Podcast. Gosh, damn it. This actually makes me nervous. Why is this weird? Stop, then stop. stop slamming the mic. I'll give you... I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, Morgan, just like this. Hey, I'm Morgan Molitor. I'm on the Modern Craftsman Podcast today, and today we're going to talk about my blog, how Jamie and I met, and oh, gosh, uh, what, our, what and our plans Tyler's are. Butt. And I even talk about Tyler's butt. <laughs> Uh, I'm typing this up right now. You're so funny. Okay, what do you want me to say? Hey, it's Morgan Molitor on the Modern Craftsman Podcast. And today we're talking about... I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> that, might be the, that might be the best intro I've ever heard. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Oh my God, it's so good. Look, perfect. Let's it's get into so it. It's so good. Thank you. Thanks, Let's Morgan. Let's keep it at that.
that? Yeah, that's, I honestly gonna, want to keep it at that. We're, keep, so we're keeping. <laughs> yeah, we're keeping it at that. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Thank Don't, you. Do not apologize. Go get your kids. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, actually, this was perfect timing. So I'm I, get well, right that's now. that's what we do. Is we perfect. Okay, I love you guys things. so much, though. Thank love you thank for you. everything. Thank Adios. you for having us. Make when you end, just hit leave studio and make sure that when you leave, it says you're uploaded. If you don't, no big deal. Oh, right. No. Okay. If it's not Adios. uploaded, Doug can send you a link. Okay. To- neither of you are going to Kvis. No. I don't think so. You're having a baby. You don't think so? My yeah. wife no. is having a baby. Let's just be clear. <laughs> you're having a baby, mm. Nick. I did nothing. You did a lot of something. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Accurate. All right. Accurate. All right. I love you guys a lot, though. Thank you for this time. Adios. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hold on. Just hit. Hit leave. I don't know how to shut off. Hit leave. <laughs> hit leave. She can't hear me. Hit leave studio. I don't know. You can just see me. <laughs> I guess text her. Uh, there you go. There we go. I got it. Oh. This podcast is brought to you by Rockwell. Uh, man, dude, we just, uh, did you see my post this week? We decided that in the basement rather than framing all, all the I walls. Did. Dude, I, I talked about it a little bit last week, but this week, like now it's installed. It looks so much better. It's yeah. easier for the plumber, the, the electrician to pull all his wires. Um, put such a good detail. And, and I actually got a few people reaching out saying, hey, what about fire blocking at the very top? The nice thing is like Rockwell, you know, as long as there's no air gap, you're good. Yeah. Like that, like that, that gets your fire blocking and in any areas that we might have to address. We'll just go by there with some comfort bats, stuff it in the top of that, that wall section before we board and we're golden. So I know Mike uh, actually had the insulator and Rockwell out uh, and they're walking through all the details, especially with that complicated roof. You know, Rockwell is pretty upfront with us and said, hey, there's a couple of areas that we don't recommend using this product just because you're not going to get the R value. So they had recommended a better way to do it. But overall, I mean, that's what I like about being part of the R class program. But overall, like to be able to use that product throughout the entire home for sound, for thermal, uh, for below gray, below slab. Uh, it's 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 a great partnership. So. Nobody likes fire blocking, but Rockwell does make it a lot easier. And let me re- let's let's make sure we rephrase it. I think it's fire stopping. Fire so, stop. Yes, okay. fire stopping. And I've said that before, and and people crucify me over it. So it's fire stopping. Um, but I actually, well, either way, you know what? You guys hit us up on Instagram. Let 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 us know if it's fire stopping or fire blocking. I should know that, but I don't write. Feel in like this it's probably moment. blocking. I feel like probably. stop. I don't it's know. Probably, it's probably but both. Essentially, we're looking. To, oh, draft draft blocking. Might draft, be maybe. draft stopping or blocking, whatever. Think, You're looking to avoid fire moving from one plane to another. Correct. Vertical to horizontal. So if you guys want to join the R class program, head over to rockwell.com slash R class uh, and get yourself a, well, you don't have to get yourself a, you'll get a swag box anyway. And it's Do cool. It. Do so it. So you get that, fl- that flannel. Cool. Uh, there's a few people still on YouTube. Appreciate you guys hanging out, watching us live. Uh, do us a favor. If you know anyone, uh, that would benefit from our podcast, you know, sole proprietors, business owners, people in the trades, people that want to be in the trades, want to get into the trades, learn about the trades, make sure you please, please, please share this with them. Share the link. It's on all your podcast platforms. Now it's on YouTube every week. Tuesday, 3 p.m. We're recording and sharing it live. And this video will be uh, edited and posted with the podcast for the future. Cool. All right. I'll send you you a new link. Okay. Peace.